Welcome back to the channel hosers. I'm gonna do a quick review here on the, the new CZ that I was talking about that finally arrived. I had a chance to put a few rounds through it on Saturday and I just wanted to give you my initial impressions on it. Um, so we'll dive on into this. But first I wanna do a little housekeeping here. A few people have asked me about when am I going to eat that chocolate bar. Uh, I already actually did it in the Trigger Tech video it's uh, linked up here if you look it's called trigger tech diamond fail and uh, i ate two bars of that uh, disgusting chocolate it ended up making me violently ill and gave me the rhea um oh that's diarrhea not gonorrhea the the gonorrhea i got from from my wife but uh, that's in the trigger tech video so you could check that out um i'm gonna ask you to hit that subscriber like button and uh comment down below let me know uh, how the videos are coming along and if there's anything you guys like to see so uh, with all that taken out taken care of let's dive on in so this is the czp 10 that i was telling you that i ordered back in april um uh, oh you know what i was just going to complain that all of my cz boxes stick none of them open they always get stuck all four of them and i just as i was ready to bitch and complain i noticed there's a big push button here and look at that, it opens. Son of a gun. Okay, well, learned. Uh, oh, yeah, there. Holy crap, look at that. No freaking way. Wow. Okay, well, learned something, guys. I uh, hope that helps you because I had no clue about that. So here's the CZP10. Uh, we're going to dive in. I don't need to safety check this because I never load my guns. Oh, what's that? Oh. Oh, are there. Just kidding, guys. These are snap caps. I wanted to show you these stupid snap caps that, uh, believe it or not, a law enforcement officer gave me. Uh, he used to use them for teaching his course. And uh, the reason I'm showing you these are because, for those of you who haven't seen them yet, Federal Syntec, Federal Syntec ammunition, exactly the same. These have no primers, obviously. They're completely inert. Uh, I don't use them. These are strictly for the video. My gun is always kept separate without magazines in a trigger lock in a safe. But I just wanted to tell you if you have these, throw them out. Um, Syntec are too similar. And you know what? When you start mixing uh, snap caps that look like real ammo, that's when accidents happen. Get yourself real snap caps, tipped in, see through with a spring. Uh, these might actually even help your firing pin because there is a spring in there or just you know regular opaque with a little rubber um, To help your firing pin. So anyways guys just a little public service announcement there to save you heartache um, So CZP 10 uh, Compact this is the compact version and I'm not going to pretend to know a great deal about the CZP 10 uh, but from what I understand, the, the C is obviously compact and it's supposed to compete with the likes of MMP Shield, um, the Glock 19 and, you know, whatever other compacts there are out there. Um, this has a little bit shorter of a grip and it comes with a threaded barrel and suppressor height night sights. So the sights are raised. If you put a suppressor on, you could see over it. The front has a tr uh, some sort of insert. I'm not sure if it's tritium, but it, it glows. And it's painted white, whereas the rear is just the insert to glow. So this white dot actually does stand out quite a bit. Um, front, and, front and rear serrations, extremely aggressive. This one is more of a traditional polymer. Um, sorry, when I say traditional, I mean traditional for, for CZ. The CZ-75, you know, the Shadow Series and, and Tac Sport Series. The rail, well, I'll show you better when I take it down, but the, the slide actually rides on the outside of the rail, so there's less of the top of the slide exposed to grab, and it's actually kind of tough with the CZ-75s. This one is more traditional. It rides on the outside of the, of the frame, and you have big, deep, aggressive serrations. Very easy. You know, if you want to do, I actually did some press checks and uh, wasn't too bad. So I like that touch. Um, you'll notice the the frame is a little bit smaller. So I've got, you know, average size hands, nothing 
too big, but you'll see that. And the magazine comes with a plus two extension and it creates that little bit of extra room to grab, right? So you could see it gives you a little bit more space to grab. Now, the mags in stock configuration, it comes with two. It comes with this regular base plate, which sits flush. So you just have to change the, the actual spring sits in this groove and the, the plates. So it's, it slides in, actually goes like this. So this little hole snaps into this base plate hole. Um, you pop it out and you put the new one in. This one, it sits flush. So it would look like this as opposed to to that so a couple things uh first and foremost when i say plus two i mean plus two for the uh for you americans because in canada this mag is permanently welded to 10. we could put all the base plates we want we can only get 10 in there so it's pinned so no matter what base plate we can't go further down so we only have 10. Uh, and the other thing i want to mention is that i was a little disappointed in this because look at that gap. Uh, I find that, you know, really frustrating and annoying. It just, little things like that bother me. If it, you know, it's supposed to be like that, flush. But both mags with the original, even with the flush fitting, still have that little gap. And uh, these both with the base extension have that little gap. Little things like that drive me crazy. Uh, it's just a, you know, lack of attention to detail. Uh, other manufacturers don't do that. My MNP doesn't do that. My SIG doesn't do that. Glock, I'm not sure if they do. I never really paid attention to it on the Glock. But uh, otherwise, you know, nice, nice looking pistol. I uh, got the, I don't want to say OD because this is more, to me, it's more of a gray, uh, urban gray, I think they call it. Uh, but, you know, a few nice touches is you've got the checkered um, stippling right here which is pretty aggressive it's not bad but what i really like is that they put it right here um so if you're almost kind of like a gas pedal it's just something to to get traction on so i i like that a lot that's a nice touch a lot of people do that aftermarket with their glocks either with a uh, soldering iron or through a custom shop so it's a nice touch that they put that in there for you uh other things as a full rail so you know that's a nice touch you could throw a laser on it or, or uh, a light um, interchangeable back straps which we'll get to in a second and uh, the one thing is uh, that caught me off guard when I when I first took this to the range on Saturday uh, I literally picked it up Friday and didn't really do anything with it and Saturday I went to shoot it other than change the base uh, magazine base so I get to the range I load it and I shoot my first magazine and the magazine won't come out and I'm like what the hell and I tried it on this side and it came out and I was like, oh, somebody flipped it. But then I put it in and it came out. So this is a truly, it was just stiff. This is a truly ambi in that you don't have to flip it. Like, you know, most ambies, you have to flip it. It, it only goes one way and you just reverse it and the spring. But this one is truly both sides, which is, you know, really nice touch because you can do it uh, right out of the box, fully ambidextrous, uh, slide stop and and uh, magazine release. And I mean, it's also got an ambi trigger. You can use uh, either left trigger finger or right trigger finger. So that's a nice touch too. I've always liked the ambi triggers, guys. <laughs> uh, so, you know, caught me off guard and I uh, thought that was a really nice touch for, you know, a gun that retails for about five, 600 bucks. So nice touch, uh, takedown. Same as a Glock, triggers pulled, you pull the slide back ever so slightly. These one and two, you might have uh, one and two, you just pull down, slide comes off. Simple, right? Frame is just polymer with, you know, your trigger mechanism in there. Again, you know, just like a Glock, nothing too complicated. Very few parts, uh, very few things to grease and clean. You would just literally put grease on these metal rails here. Uh, I'm not even sure if you, if you have to put it there. I typically do. And then I usually put a little tiny bit of oil down there on that trigger spring. And really that's it for the frame. So super easy. Very reminiscent of a Glock. Uh, continues to look more like a Glock even after that. Captured recoil guide rod, uh, spring on a guide rod. 
just pop it out. Because of the threaded barrel, you have to remove this to get the barrel out. So you take this out and then the barrel comes out. So initial impressions, uh, the barrel uh, is a little bit, it looks a little bit beefier and fatter than like what a Glock or an MMP would look like. Accuracy, uh, again, I only did 50 something rounds. I think I just did under 60. Uh, and that's because I had a box and a little bit lying around. Oops, there goes my barrel. So uh, I only did about 60 rounds and the accuracy was, you know, as expected at 10 yards uh, from shooting a gun you've never shot before. I'm just going to, I'll put some video up of it and I'll just talk you through it, but um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it picture in picture. But as you can see, I'm just getting a feel for the gun. So the first shots here on number nine, I'm shooting at the left target. And from going from memory, I think I was a little high. So you can see just between the head and the, the, the bullseye, you'll see me forming a group that's a little bit high. And uh, we'll chalk that up to the night sights, but and then I start pulling left to the bit. But, um, you know, very controllable, very easy to handle, uh, very reminiscent of a Glock and an M&P. You know, the trigger, uh, again, with only 50 rounds, it's hard to say. Um, so this this series you're gonna see I'm doing on this the right hand side and you'll see just pay attention I slowed down a bit and I'm and I'm shooting at the bullseye and you'll see that uh, you could see the hits coming just to the top right of the red of the bullseye in the uh, center mass so uh, you know when you slow down a bit the groups are there it is just you know getting uh, accustomed to the night sight heights the height of the sights being suppressor sights. So other than that, guys, you know, very, very similar to every other polymer gun out there. Uh, can't say really anything about it. You know, the striker mechanism, you would just pull that out and striker would come out. So uh, I'll do a full strip down if, if, if there's any demand for it. But, you know, it's the same as every other polymer gun out there. The only one difference that I wanted to show you, and I've already done the, the hammering, is so it has interchangeable back straps obviously so here's the it comes with two plus the so small medium large and the only difference here is this one is actually held together held in with a roll pin which i really dislike um i don't like roll pins i've damaged a few and then they don't want to come out or they don't want to go back in and then you have to buy a new one it wasn't even necessary. They did such a good mechanism here. Like, look, this is literally four sets of rails that it slides into. I don't think they need such a, you know, a robust system like a roll pin to put in there. But anyways, if you're going to bang it out, it is the 564 punch. You get this little thing in there. It's kind of jagged, which I don't understand. Maybe it makes it better going in. But I found that with these jags... It actually grabbed a little bit of polymer on the way out. So I'm not sure why they do that and not just like a fully enclosed roll pin. But anyways, uh, that's how you do it. There's a little roll pin in there and you just punch it out. Punch it back in and you put the one on that you the, the size you like. They they slide up nice and easy. And then you just punch it back in and, uh, and you're good to go. So you, there's a little bit of customizability there. So again, you know, uh, initial impressions, very decent gun, well, well worth the money, you know, at the price point you're, you're picking them up for, for five, six hundred dollars retail. And I routinely see these selling for cheaper. I think it offers value. I think it offers performance. Uh, definitely easy to shoot fast. Uh, again, I'm not going to comment on accuracy because um, I didn't really shoot it slow or take my time or put it on a rest and secondly i don't think they're built for accuracy these are these are true duty combat pistols um they're meant to you know hit a person sized target not to shoot bullseyes so um but that being said i've had really really good luck with cz barrels before so i don't i don't see any problems here so i'll just quickly put it back together so barrel goes in Thread protector goes back on. Captured recoil rod. The smaller part goes into this, obviously. And it just gets caught 
right there on the lip of the barrel, the locking lug. One thing I don't like is that's a that's a polymer guide rod. Um, will it hold up? Yeah, I'm sure. Probably. Well, phone died and then the camera died. That's a bad. Uh, so anyways, uh, what I was saying is polymer guide rod. Will it hold up? Yeah, probably. I've never had a problem with any guide rod breaking on me, but um you know uh, i the first thing i would change if i changed anything would be to put a stainless steel uh, so that's it just push it back pull it locks into place pull the trigger and you're good to go gun is put back together and uh it's it's ready to go so i'll just quickly show you the reset so here's the trigger fully depressed audible reset nice and loud so right as soon as it resets there's literally zero creep or take up so that's actually a nice touch uh watch so yeah there's no creep there it's just a smooth trigger pull so nice nice trigger again it's you know for combat um not for bullseye not for precision uh but we'll put it through its paces so enjoy the footage uh it's just a small sample i think i shoot some steel which i'll roll in and let me know if you have any questions and uh oh by the way guys in canada uh suppressors are completely prohibited in any way shape or form unless they're fake um in which case they're not a suppressor they're just a piece of steel so uh threaded barrel again does nothing for us in canada but uh that's how they come so so guys, hit me up if you have any questions or comments, and uh, we'll talk later.